Hey everyone, welcome to my show and this, the, the name of this show is Wednesdays for Women. This is specially for women and this particular show, Wednesdays for Women, in association with Freebirds.co, we bring you some exceptional women to the fore. These women are actually quietly doing their work. They have created stories for themselves. They have not wasted a single moment in their lives and they have... Uh, given us reasons for joy they have given us reasons to be proud of them and that is why today i have with me a wonderful beautiful intelligent supremely good looking woman and uh, this lady i really love a lot her name is Do she stays in guwahati she's very pretty she's a loving loving human being she's uh very, you know, talented, very talented. She's got a lot of talents. We'll get to know about it during the program. And here she is, a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Shabnam Chaudhary. I call her Shabnam and the beautiful dentist. We always, you know, we say that when we look at this dentist, all our pain of our teeth and all our problems will just fly out of the window. So here she Yes, warm welcome Thank to you. you. Thank you, Tina. Thank you so much. That was really, I mean, I feel you went over the board. I don't deserve that, but that, that was really kind of you. Thanks a lot for having me here. Listen, Shabnam, let me tell you something in the very beginning. You deserve the world. Okay, when you say that you don't deserve what I'm saying, actually, this program is for women like you who are creating stories. You would have just got married and not done anything in your life. But then you have such a beautiful story to tell us. You have a career. You are, you are looking after your family. And you are also, you know, creating a beautiful story for yourself. So when you say you don't deserve what I'm saying, you actually deserve more. Than <laughs> okay. So, uh, so you, you are a Shillong girl as far as I know. Um, and you grew up in Shillong. And uh, I'm a Shillong girl also. So I have a great affinity and love for people from Shillong. And uh, the, I, I'm sure you have beautiful memories of Shillong. You studied there. So let us start from the beginning. You, were you born there, Shab Shabna? Yes, were you yes. born Yes. You yes. were born in Shillong? Okay. I was born, I was born in Shillong. Like, it's like it's said that once you, are, you live in mountains, you cannot escape. You just belong to them. I'm... And by heart, at heart, I'm completely, I'm a truly Shillong girl. Like the love for the place, the land, the people can never outgrow. Like you know, you know very well, you've been a Shillong girl as well. I have been bo born and brought up there. I did my schooling there. The best days of my life would be my childhood days, actually. Right? It, I mean, the, my parents were there, they were working. My mother was working there. My mother was a, she was a homemaker. So I studied in Pine Mount School. I'm an alumnus of Pine Mount School, Shillong. I passed out my ICSC from there. So I just have wonderful memories from Shillong. My teachers, like I owe my life to Shillong. Like you would never realize the importance of being in Hill Station until and unless you move out of the, I mean, move out of the hills. And you come out to the plains, the weather, everything is, there's something serene about the air in Shillong. You would know it better. You are also a Shillong girl. So that's how, it, uh, I mean, life, would, life was really easy then. Summers, there were no summers, like actually there were not, uh, no summers as such in Shillong. The main temperature, I mean, the average temperature during summers would be like, somewhere around 25 and that would be like really hot. We would take blankets. We, go, we would go to school early mornings at around 8.30. 8, our school would start at 8.30 a.m. But we would reach school by 8, 8 a.m. So that's how it is. Winters were fun actually. During winters, we had three months of holidays, right from December to February. So the new session starts Life was simple, easy, fun. I mean, it was fun. The people around were easy. They were very, I mean, they were loving actually. We had, like, Shillong is a small place. So it's like everybody, one or the other knows the other person. Like, we tend to know each other well. 
uh, not like those in cities like where uh, i mean it was quite slow in the beginning now it has taken up the speed i believe now like the things are changing in shillong but things were different when we were born there when we were brought up there so that's how it is lovely i mean you have such lovely memories of shillong me too you know when i uh, was growing up there you were saying that it was very slow at first and, and now it's picked up pace and yeah. uh, you were very right about one thing uh, shabnam we you know each of us used to know the neighbors you know we used to know what's happening yeah. to our door neighbors we used to go to their house we in the evenings we used to go and have our food out there nowadays we don't even know what's happening in our next door you know i don't even know what's happening in my next door neighbors place Same it's like that, you know we are so like, we've grown so apart yeah we've so grown so apart there used to be like you know and the place where i used to stay in limbukra we used to have marwari people we used to have punjabi people khasi bengali ohomia everybody all of us used to stay together and all of us used to you know be such good friends and the first time i remember when the television came and uh, everybody used to come to our house because that was the first television in the area yeah. and they used to all come to our house so we used to have so much fun you know yeah. so uh, uh, growing up in shillong was a totally different thing now we are so distant it's sad to say that we are so distant we are so apart apart from this virtual medium see you stay in guwahati i stay in guwahati but how many times have we come to each other's house we have not gone to each other's house we have not visited but then this is the way we are talking See, we become so virtual nowadays. We become so techno savvy mm-hmm. that you know we have to take the help of flip side of, computers. Flip side laptop. of COVID, actually. Flip side of COVID, I should rather say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I think I think that's true. So you studied in Pine Mount. Let me tell you a secret about Pine Mount and Loreto Convent. We used to be enemies, you know. You I used to be Loreto. I yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> and you know Pine. Mount, uh pinemount and uh, loreto used to go to edmunds for their sports days if you remember for their yeah. sports day and then you know we used to always say oh my god these pinemount these proud monkeys have come and now yeah. we, <laughs> we are not going to get a chance with the boys you know so we, um, i used to always say that no oh my god these, these these girls are more beautiful these pinemount girls are more beautiful they are going to take away the boys from us you know so we used to have to be a tug of war in between pm girls and lc girls right but you know what yeah. happened Uh, once I cleared my ICSC, I joined Lady Keen College. So okay. I was there. I was there, and there were many Loreto girls, and we had a huge gang. Like there were only few of us PM girls, and okay. we had a huge gang. So we would like bunk college, bunk classes together, and we were very, we we became very friendly to each other. So you'd. it's actually i believe that when you are in the school it is just like the trend that you need to be rivals right once yeah. you come across that you become real good friends i still have my friends they are from loreto and we do we are of course now things are very busy like life has become very really busy so you don't get to meet each other neither are we in contact but then it's like whenever we even chat on facebook like messenger so we it's like we just pick up from where we left like it's it, things are like that things it, you really miss those days childhood days i mean those days in shillong i really miss it's really a bliss being in shillong true true sure. uh, i love the shillong people and still i've got so many friends there and uh, so uh, uh, shabnam you had after your studies in pine mount what where did you go to study next what uh, what happened next so you studied dentistry i think and uh, yes, how yes. did all this happen yeah i was uh, for a few days i was in cotton college actually okay. yes so here i have met many amazing friends even in cotton here yeah, just i was here for a few days then i joined dental it was uh, i went to bangalore raja rajeshwari dental college it's under rajiv gandhi university of health sciences so it's there that i i completed my graduation my dental degree so so why then den- why dentistry i mean such a beautiful doctor such a beautiful dentist you you could have become a model or an actress or anything but why dentistry why no, why no, no, mod- modeling and actress is seriously not my cup of tea <laughs> so but, it was actually during my school days i used to be good at academics 
I used okay. to do, I used to do I mean I always wanted to be an be a doctor so what happened I used but I used to be very scared of dentists when I was really young I remember once I was taken to dentist uh, probably I was around 10 years or so I don't remember the year exactly I've gone there to get my milk tooth extracted so I was really scared I cried a lot and I like I did not let him pluck my tooth so I just came back and then later what happened when I was in when I was in class 11 I I had severe I got the severe toothache I used to have sweet tooth and I was very fond of sweets so it was like one of my molars got affected I got the severe toothache and in Shillong back then there were not many dentists there were just only few dentists only few remarkable ones and it was very difficult that day my dad tried a lot to get his appointment but then that was not possible I and then next day that whole night I really suffered in pain so it's just next day when I had visited him and then got myself treated the RCTs got started and then I felt the relief in my pain. I mean, the toothache. Toothache, is a real, toothache can be really bad. I mean, yes, it can yes. be just so not the pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was then I realized that you know, I can be, I mean, it attracted me. Actually, the, it relieves one of pain, right? And it's not only about the pain. It's like once you're into dentistry, it is like you can, you get the, you have the authority to do, to design a smile, smile of a person, like in the sense you have broken interiors, you can just rebuild it, get a good smile. It builds a confidence of the person. It besides treating, it also builds the confidence of a person. It gives a good self appearance. I mean, good appearance of the patient. So obviously he's very satisfied and he's happy. So the person, when he's happy, he's, he tends to be healthy. So the many things, I mean, in a broader sense, dentistry is a comprehensive, like you get to give a comprehensive care to, to patients of all ages. Right. So that really attracted me. That's how I was like, you know, I'll, I'll go for dentistry. So that's how wow. I got into that. Wonderful. And you've got beautiful teeth. I must, I must admit that. I think you do it to yourself or something. You've got beautiful teeth yourself. I can't do it myself. <laughs> I so I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I, I just wanted to know something from you that, you know, is it very necessary that women, children, even adults, even men, should they go for regular, you know, dental care, you know, and how regular should they go? At what interval should they go and check their teeth? It is very important. Actually, dental care, oral care is something we tend to neglect it. We actually neglect it. Like early morning, it, it has become a ritual. We get up, we brush our teeth. So we, we don't, we ignore how we need to brush our teeth. What are the, what is the, what are the kind of brushes we need to use? We need to floss our teeth, which is very important. And very few of us floss our teeth. So like, it is very important that we need to take good care of our teeth. And what happens, even if we brush our teeth properly, what happens, there are caries, which you never know when your teeth gets affected. It is only when it goes deep down, it affects the nerves, then only you realize that your teeth has been affected and it gives severe pain. Like it affects the nerves, right? And it can just, like, it is a throbbing pain that doesn't get relieved very easily. So you need to go and visit dentists regularly, at least if not within six months, once in six months, if that is not possible, at least once in a year. Once in a year is a must actually. You never know, there might be pit caries, there might be, and young children are very prone because what happens when you're very, when you're an infant, you are into feeding, right? The breastfeeding. What happens when you sleep? When the when the mother puts the baby to sleep, so the baby sleeps off, but the milk is already it gets. I mean, he doesn't he or she doesn't swallow the milk, so the teeth gets affected very. I mean, teeth gets affected very easily. It's very common among children among children to get this rampant caries, what we call, when it affects mostly 
maximum of the teeth, maximum of the interiors are affected. So it is very necessary. There are certain things which you need to follow. And, and besides that, you need to visit a dentist every year. I mean, once in a year at least. If your teeth are still fine, at least you, you get to know everything about it. Terrible. I think you should punish me because I haven't gone to the dentist in two years. So I, sh I, sh I think I should make it a point that straight after this, I should go. And especially because of the COVID, everyone has been telling me I wanted to go. But then, you know, because of this COVID thing, they were saying, no, 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 don't go because you no, might no, get it. I don't, I don't, Is, does that happen? Yes, yes. I advise you not to go during the COVID times because COVID has really taken over okay. everything. Like, so what has happened since we are, we are under lockdown so us under so, I mean since so many months it's been about six months I believe right from March right. So what has happened when actually dentists are very much at risk. So it may so happen you may spread the infection to the, your dentist and uh, in turn the dentist may spread the infection to you. What happens the dentist now we were barred from working in the mouth for we nearly about two to three months complete there was complete shutdown of our work so we were i work in a government setup so i was assigned other duties like i was into triage i was made the in charge of that then i was into i was uh, assigned nodal officer i had to look after everything regarding the covid i mean during those times because uh, dental procedures were completely shut because first thing is you need to cover your mouth, right? The virus actually resides inside the mouth. And you, we, our profession is we need to work inside the mouth. And second thing, it produces a lot of erosion. So it is the most riskiest. I mean, it is the most scary profession as of now. Second comes uh, like ENT, then anesthesia. So everything like, Everything starts from erosion in our case. So we were supposed to shut down our procedure. So that is why I have asked you at least avoid elective procedures. Avoid, uh, avoid going to dentists right now unless and until there is an emergency. Yeah, in case there is an abscess, there is a severe toothache or in case like there might be an accident, God forbid. Then and in case of lesions like cancers and all those need treatment those require treatment so that can't be avoided other than that you need to avoid going to dentists right now at least for so, so shabnam i think i think a, a lot of people who have been having dental problems during this period of time i'm sure they must be facing so much of trauma no because they are mm -hmm. not being able to visit the doctor the dentist and especially me i have been wanting to go to the dentist but people have been saying no 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 don't go now go after some time so this is being delayed by more than six months that i haven't gone so imagine me i know myself personally i have not gone for six months imagine all those people like you were just saying just now imagine for somebody who has got an emergency so they must be facing a lot of problems right Yes, yes, they did face a lot of problems. Like it was in the beginning, it was like uh, none of the emergency cases, like abscess, if you have an abscess or a swelling or severe toothache, it gets relieved once you open up the cavity and the pus, there's a buildup of pus, right, beneath the teeth. So what happens? Why there's a severe toothache? What happens? There is not much space for the pus to move about, right? In other areas, there's soft tissue. There is not much of compression, but in case of tooth, the pain is severe. So in many cases during COVID, yes, I agree, dental patients did face a lot of problem because we were not supposed to do the procedures like um, such as uh, like uh, uh, RCTs, whatever that would be relieving. So that is why like we first thing, what we had to do was, Whenever the patient had come, okay, if he had some serious problem, yes, he consulted us. Okay, we would actually, we would actually, I mean, what do you say? We would check out whether he really needs a treatment or not. Even if he needed a treatment, we could not give in those days. 
like it produces a lot of erosion now rt pcr tests have come up rapid antigen tests have come up that is why like things have become little easier earlier there were not many kits available so you could not i mean you could not risk your patients nor can you risk any of your staff working with you and there it was it had already come from the indian dental association that unless and until there would be any emergencies you're not supposed to treat the patients so that's how it is going on covid is going on yes but i that the sad but uh, but but then see it. Sorry, sorry, you were saying something. Yeah, yes. I, saying something. I was saying that COVID has taken over the whole world, I and mean, it's really sad. We have lost so many of our colleagues, our relatives yes. to COVID. What has happened? But still, people are so very reluctant. I mean, they don't understand that they need to protect themselves in order to protect their family. They need to protect themselves. You just see, once the lockdown has been lifted, you see areas like Ganesh Puri, Beltola Bazaar. people are they crowd like anything they don't even wear the mask and even if they're wearing the mask it's right down it's under the nose so it makes no sense if you don't cover your nose it really makes no sense so they don't fo uh, follow all this etiquette it's really sad i just it's an appeal actually through this show if we can really appeal one even one if we can make a change to one of our viewers that at least take this thing strictly because there are many complications associated with that as well so please stay safe keep others safe and don't crowd we work we work in a government setup so it's like everything is free in our in our hospital so like there are many patients they of course many do need i mean they require genuine treatment there's some like they just come up even during the lockdown period like they were around uh 100 100 plus patients when there was strict lockdown so it was like they don't follow the norm they don't follow the protocols actually that is why i mean the cases are rising day by day that's how everything is getting so, affected yeah shabnam so this is also a very worrying factor that you know most of uh, the the dentists are not being visited so their uh, source of income is also being affected by this covid thing you know so i am yes. also very worried about that so we were not never talking about the dentist we are talking about migrant laborers we are talking about xyz but then here we have a situation when when i'm talking with you as i'm conversing with you i can understand that the dentists also are facing this problem of earning their bread and butter because their clients their patients have not gone to them because of this covid situation like you said please don't go so uh, i i'm sure they must have been affected and that is a very worrying factor because even doctors have to survive they also dentists will also have to survive and they have to live their lives so the um, the other thing i wanted to ask you is that during this covid season like during this uh, lockdown period now it's, it's uh, oh, of course we have the lockdown is over almost over so how does one take care of their teeth now you are saying that we can, we need not please visit the doctor because this is a high risk kind of a profession that you have and uh, we uh, the patients we do not need to visit but what kind of care would you advise for women children elders what kind of uh, uh, like you know care would you advise for their teeth oral oral uh, things oral care yes actually there are many i mean day to day there are certain things which we don't follow regularly like suppose just sometime back with what i just said that we brush our teeth we wake up early in the morning the first thing we do is we grab a toothbrush and we brush it we don't realize whether the way we are brushing is correct or not right so the first thing there are few mistakes actually i would just like to i mean point out those mistakes which we usually i believe most of us do commit every day so they are like first thing is like now obviously you've got to brush right you've got to paste at home so it is like when you wake up early the first thing is like you brush the when we there are many mistakes the first mistake is you should not brush for too long we sh we should not use the same toothbrush for too long like there are many people they keep on using the same brush when we keep using yes. what happens the bristles flare out right 
So when the bristles flare out and we are trying to brush our teeth and we are, what is the motive for brushing the teeth? We need to clean the food particle that forms a layer on top of the teeth and we need to remove that. If we can't remove that, it makes no sense. I mean, brushing makes no sense. So the first thing I would say, the mistake which we make is, first thing, please do not use your toothbrush for more than two or three months or until your toothbrush or whichever is earlier. Like if your tooth, I mean the bristles of your toothbrush gets flared, you need to change it. Okay. The second thing I would say is when you brush, brush at least for two minutes. Use a fluoridated toothpaste. All the toothpaste in the market are fluoridated. So at least brush for two minutes. I mean, when you brush, you at least brush for two minutes once. Once in the morning, once at night. That is twice a day. So and if you don't brush for two minutes, the fluoride does not get enough time to act on the tooth. Fluoride is very helpful for cavities. Second thing is use a soft toothbrush or an extra soft. Do not use hard toothbrush or medium toothbrush. What happens if we use a hard toothbrush or a medium toothbrush, we tend to abrade our enamel and our gum diseases may, I mean, may follow. Maybe what happens in due course of time, the gum recession happens. And so there a number of problem comes up. So please use a soft toothbrush or an extra soft toothbrush. Third thing I would say, I've got one model actually. It, it, it simulates teeth. Can you see this? Okay. So this is the upper, yes. upper teeth, upper jaw, and this is the lower jaw. So it's like when you brush, you need to know the proper technique of brush. There's nothing very, I mean, you. there's nothing, it's not a rocket science. It's just very simple. Take a soft toothbrush, and when you brush, you just need to hold it in an angle, 45 degrees, and you just brush up and down. Do not go back and forth, okay? So that's another thing. You need to clean all the surfaces of your tooth. Then third thing is please, after brushing, please clean your tongue. Cleaning okay. your tongue is something which we most, most of us avoid it. What happens when we eat? Tongue is a part of an oral cavity. The food gets lodged there, right? It forms a film there. So the tongue gets coated actually. So that coating needs to be removed daily after two minutes of brushing. Do not brush more than twice a day and do not brush very hard, okay? okay. And the third thing is, oh, another thing I would like you, I would like to point out is, uh, you may use a tongue cleaner while cleaning your tongue or mostly toothbrushes, they've got ridges behind the toothbrush. So okay. that is called tooth scraper. So that like uh, what happens is, uh, you, as you can see here, I don't know whether it's visible. It's not yes, very yes. visible. You just need to clean. You just need to scrape your tongue. So that's all about oral hygiene. Another thing I would like to point out, please do not keep your toothbrushes in the bathroom. What happens in a study, it has been proved that most of the toothbrushes on top of the toothbrushes, feces have been found. Okay, so yes, even if you have a cover, the environment inside the bathroom is very humid. So okay. it may not dry up, right? So it is advisable to please keep your toothbrush anywhere, but not in your bathroom. Keep it anywhere, bedside table, anywhere, but not in your bathroom. And third thing would be floss your teeth regularly floss your teeth there are many people avoid flossing because what happens something like this this is a dental floss which okay. comes in a market you need to there is a procedure how we need to floss flossing is very important why because the brush does not reach those areas of the teeth so flossing cleans the interdental areas and third thing is like you need to rinse your mouth 
even if you don't have a Listerine or uh, anything like chloride, chloridated mouth rinse, you can rinse it with your water and salt. I mean, add a pinch of salt in it and just rinse your mouth regularly. Then, obviously, as everybody knows, when we, whenever everybody, every day in the commercials, the most thing, the most scariest thing actually, which is more prevalent in dentistry is oral cancers which is mostly prevalent in Northeast India. You know, most of our elders, I mean, I believe every second house they are into, I mean, one of the members or even two, I don't know, but they are into the habit of chewing pan, I reckon a beetle nut, yes, lime, then this tobacco. So everything, everything is a contributory factor. And oral cancer is one thing which can be really prevented because inside we are, everything is visible inside our mouth right at least when you see there might be a small patch in on the lip or in the or in the inside of the cheek what we call as buccal mucosa what happens when you are into a habit of taking tobacco a white patch or a red patch may form like leukoplakia or um, I mean, uh, the red ones are called erythroplakia. So you need to be very careful about those white and red patches. If those are visible, please visit your dentist at the earliest. I mean, your healthcare professional, wherever it is, because it may be, I mean, even a jagged edge of a tooth that may lead to a cancer that may keep on rubbing against the tongue. So yes. all these things need to be, need to be kept in mind while you maintain your oral hygiene, while you, while you look after yourself. So these are just few small things. I mean, I don't need to say that uh, you should avoid everywhere, it's everywhere in the news, everywhere in, on the TV, you go watch a movie, everywhere they show those scary looking lesions. Yes. yes. So you need, to, you need to be careful. It can be avoided. At least it can be avoided to a larger extent. So these are things which we need to follow. Rinse your mouth regularly. Avoid, avoid, or avoid such habits if you have any. And in case if there is a pain, then you need to, at least first of all, you need to call up your dentist. Take, in, take advice, whatever the dentist advises, whether it's uh, just uh, an analgesic, a painkiller, an antibiotic, or maybe you may be asked to visit the office. So accordingly, please follow the, I mean, follow the whatever the uh, advices you have been given by the dentist. I believe that should help at least during this time. Not only during these times, this is something which is very prevalent. I mean, oral cancers, oral diseases are very common. So we need to look after our teeth, right? Yes, you, you said it so beautifully and I wish, you know, sometimes that, you know, you would go to colleges and to schools and all because I've seen young boys and girls, they have that, you know, those packets of things into, they put it into their mouth and sometimes I find them in front of my house. So I always tell them that, you know, uh, you know, little, uh, I, I tell these little boys and girls, I said, look, Baba, you are having all this, you don't know what will happen inside your mouth, you know, but they keep having it. This oral hygiene is something so important, but they don't understand it. All the time they're having this pan supari and I don't know what they keep having and it's scary. Youngst youngsters, you know, youngsters are very much into the habit of gutka, pan masala. That is really yeah. bad. This Rajni Gandha and there's another one called Shikhar. So Shikhar. what happens, yes, what happens, you know, it's really, it's even more scary. What happens because of pan masala chewing, there are many, many of our youngsters here, they are into this habit. I have actually been, be, I mean, I've been counseling many of my people, I mean, many of people I know, they do this habit. What happens, you know, when you are into the habit of oral, I mean, pan masala chewing, the inside of your cheek, it gets, I mean, there are fibrous bands. So that those get thickened. And the tissue, I mean, there's, um, there's a normal mouth opening, about three to four fingers. What happens, it, it pulls the tissues, it makes it so tight that you're unable to open your mouth. You know, there people, many people have come to us 
they can't even open their mouth they like it is so difficult they can't even have anything like anything forget about spicy even if they have salt anything in the curry their mouth is on fire it burns like anything so you need to go for or i mean you need to go for surgeries then it's really harmful pan masala chewing is something which really needs a lot of awareness among us everybody i mean all among us everybody among us know the ill effects of such habits but people still continue to take all these right everybody everywhere as i've told everywhere in the news it's shown all the scary lesions and all but it's only when they get it they realize and it's too late so it is always i mean i i would really prefer to go ahead and i mean counsel people regarding this to stop chewing pan masala gutka then tobacco which is very much prevalent among our youngsters here in i mean more than india i believe it's more in northeast yes yes and especially in guwahati you know i actually get down from my car and i go and tell them i said you should stop having this haven't you seen the packet with all that you know those uh, pictures out there haven't you seen that yeah. and then they, they look at me as if i'm a mad woman you know they say that uh, pata nahi where this person has come from she is advising us she is counseling us but then it's my duty i think that you know at least if i can say one life also by counseling them that you know please don't have this you're going to get oral cancer you know i i think some of it is made once uh, i'll tell you the incident which happened it was in front of doordarshan in zoo road so there was this little young boy i think he must have been around in the 17 18 years and he was sitting there on the bus uh, bus uh, thing on the bus stop he was sitting on the on the on the ledge of the bus stop and i and he was smoking so i i went up to him and i said that um, uh, how old are you and how since how when have you been smoking and he said i've been smoking for a year i'm just 16 years old and i've been smoking for a year i said and uh, yes your your parents are not saying anything about it they don't know about it i said look if you are going to have this you're going to get cancer of the mouth you're going to get cancer everywhere else so can you just stop and what he did was he threw the cigarette away i even told him about his um, what will happen to him when he wants to have a child later on his his wife might not even have a child so these are the kind of effects that tobacco gutka and all these things can have so next day when i went and i asked him are you still smoking and he said no I, yesterday you told me so i'm not going to smoke anymore so that one person i think i might have you know kind of advised and changed you know somehow so that's these really are nice actually that's really nice if we can make if we can make the difference at least for a person that makes i mean it makes a huge difference right if you can counsel a person whomever we come across that no good guy is harmful rajni ganda is harmful please stop smoking everything i mean even alcohol in that case is uh, harmful there you know there many women in villages what they do is they put they light i mean they put the berry or the cigarette they eat the burnt part i mean the burnt they use it in a reverse style yes they do that and that oh, has oh, been very prevalent yes and they, that used to be it is more prevalent in rajasthan actually in those areas you know, where they are not supposed to um, i mean they're not supposed to smoke so they hide it they smoke but what they do the burnt part that the burnt end is inside the mouth so it's oh, really scary, yeah so oral yeah. cancer is yeah. something i believe it needs a lot of i mean people do know about it but still they they tend to be ignorant about it mm-hmm. this needs a lot of like what you just said that you have counseled a person like every other person needs to counsel the other person if he if he happens to come across that the other person is into such habit right it 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 makes a big difference true true so uh, you have you are working in this uh, government uh, hospital so tell us something about it you know it, it sounds very interesting you were telling me about this uh, hospital that uh, you're working in yes i'm working in esic model hospital it's called employees state insurance corporation so what happens in this i actually i was uh, selected in the year 2009 i believe yes the whole process took one year's time i 
sat for my, I mean, I gave the written test in 2008 and then I, the results came out. Then I was called for interview uh, in Kolkata, I believe, yes. And my daughter was only three months old then <laughs> when I had gone for that interview. So it was like every candidate, uh, probably they would have seen my husband had accompanied me and I'm thankful to my, I'm thankful to God for having supportive parents, supportive husband who's helped me. I mean, you need, you need help. What has happened, what happened then was my grand, uh, my father-in-law passed away just a few days back. So my interview date was scheduled. Uh, it was probably about a few days later. So he, at least, I mean, he took us along. So the first thing in, I mean, when I, when I went to enter, like when I entered the interview board and when I faced them, it was like uh, they, when I, when other uh, candidates would come out and they would say the only thing, the first thing they ask is, is the child belongs to you? Is you, I mean, are you the mother or are you the father of that child? Because she was very young then. She was about three months old when we had gone for the interview. And so that's how everything, so I got selected into it and then I started working there ever since. So it's a hospital. It, it has, I mean, it, it is a model hospital. It is only model hospital in the whole Northeast. There are many dispensaries. So we are, our hospital are entitled to many IPs. We call insured persons. So they, these are the people, these are the patients who are like, they have, uh, they work in companies, any company, which has a capacity of about more than five or so employees, they can enroll to uh, ESIC. They give a small amount, very meager amount of their salary. And the employer gives about, I guess, 4% of the, per, I mean, per uh, patient, per, sorry, for employee, a person of the salary is given to the to the corporation. The headquarters are in Delhi, so that's how it works. But the, everything is covered for them. Everything like uh, and the uh, employees uh, give about one point two five percent of their salary. So they but everything all the treatments such as chemotherapy, transplants kidney transplants, they are really expensive. Chemotherapy, then radiotherapy, everything, everything is being covered for the insured person and the beneficiaries. Beneficiaries are those who are relatives, who are dependents of the insured persons. So we've got other, uh, other facilities as well in the hospital. Uh, my husband, he's into ophthalmology. And there are other departments as well, like uh, surgery, anesthesia, every, I mean, all the departments are there, gynae, pediatrics, ortho. So everything is there. We have a number of surgeries are being, I mean, done by the surgeons in our hospital. There are like huge number of patients. Once you enter inside our OPD, like you can't even walk. Even now, like where, even during pandemic, People do come. I mean, they have no other goal, so they do come to us. They get themselves treated. So everything is being covered for the patients. Wonderful. For the beneficiaries. I, I can understand. I must visit your hospital someday. This sounds so interesting. You know, it yeah, sounds like a place to go. You know what? What happens? Sadly, there are patients who are quite demanding. There are some patients who are very sweet, and they are really grateful they just come in like their grandmother like sometimes it's like it becomes really challenging at times like they're very demanding even if you're working at times i mean like even if you're working inside like they don't have the patience to wait so it's like it's like just normal government hospital but otherwise it is rewarding in the sense like they are like i had a, uh, an old lady she always makes it a point she whenever she visits a hospital i mean whenever for any other ailment she makes it a point to come over and talk to me i mean that's really sweet it really feels rewarding there are many patients as such not all are same but that's how life is ups and downs <laughs>
Wonderful. So, uh, Shabnam, apart from all this, you have given us some wonderful tips on how to maintain oral hygiene. You've spoken about your, uh, the, I mean, where you grew up and how you have come this far. You've written beautiful stories for yourself, your family. You've got a beautiful daughter, I know, who dances very beautifully. But I also know that you used to train as a dancer and you are also a very good painter. So you are all in one, you know, you're so talented, intelligent, beautiful. And apart from that, you are also a dancer. I mean, I know you don't practice now, but then you can maybe talk about it, you know, because yeah, there are many women who uh, get married and then they, they just say, okay, I'm married now, I'm going to have around 10 kids and that's it, that's my life. But then you have uh, kind of designed your life in a very beautiful manner. And uh, I know for sure that you are also practicing dancing. So tell us something about it, dancing and painting. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a pro in that. I'm not a pro, actually. I, I had trained myself. I underwent training in the, for classical dance, Bharat Natyam, when I wow. was quite young. Yes, when I was very young. Uh, I think I was in class two since then. And then okay. back in Shillong, they, we did not have that much of exposure, right? I mean, here, like, we have Indira, Kiti, Bora, I, I mean, she, she tutoring the students. Then, then we had a sir, we had sir, he actually taught us. So I was, our school was affiliated to Bhatkande Musical School. So it was like, we, we were supposed to appear for our exam every year, but sadly our exam was held about two or, about three years later, I believe, yes. That was much later. I was pretty young then. But then in that due course of time, I went through, I mean, we we did, we got trained as a dancer. I have my friend, she, I mean, only two of us. We were very young then. We were the only kids. I mean, we were very young. They were all seniors, like they were in college and all. So we would, we would follow them. We would really, I mean, it would be, it would be a real nice, I mean, I just, I just feel like going back to my, it feels so nostalgic talking about those days. I really feel that, I feel like going back to those days. It was like, life was so easy. And I am thankful to my mother, actually. She would take all the pain to take me to dance class right there. And then once it's over, she comes back and picks me. I mean, she, she fetches me and comes back home. So that's how it is. It went on till, I believe, class eight or nine years i performed in uh, quite a i mean few uh, few occasions i did perform dance but then now it is just a hobby wow. so, so we must we must come to see your dance someday you know? oh i just hopefully yes hopefully that, i can that that very in the future yes i i do wish to let's see <laughs> The, dan the dentist who dances beautiful Bharat Naitim. I think we can see that. And then painting also, you were, you were also into a bit of painting, right? Yes, yes. Painting, I am not a pro again. I used to follow it as a passion. And I used to participate in, in a lot of painting competitions during my school days, actually. Um, there was my teacher, Mrs. Amal. She was very fond of me. Uh, she is not among us right now. So she was she was a very talented teacher. She was like good in elocution. She used to paint her own saris. She used to make her own earrings. I used to admire her a lot. Uh, I mean, and she was very nice. I mean, she was very strict. I don't, I still remember. She was very like, she was, I still remember once in school during my, I was in class five or six, I believe. Uh, she was very much, she used to like me a lot, but she was, she was very strict. So it happened every Friday, we used to have extracurricular activities in our school back then. So what happened was, uh, like the periods would be shortened and the, uh, I mean, the, we would look forward to it. What happens is we would look forward to it for the, for the, for the extracurricular activities, like we would have, a dance competition, singing competition, I mean, house activities that would be actually. So once it happened was there was some inter-school competition and she had asked me to, uh, she had asked me to draw and show it to her. 
it was in class six, I believe. Yes. And then I, I completely forgot that. And I got into this extracurricular thing. And probably there was an, there was an event then uh, called In a Minute. So I was supposed to participate and I was very excited. So she comes up and she tells me, Shabnam, you did not show me. And she would like scream and say, you did not show me. I mean, uh, she was very strict, but she was very sweet otherwise. So your punishment is everybody will go upstairs to the hall to attend the, um, I mean, whatever the house activity is, but you will stay back and you will paint. And you will show me before <laughs> the school gets over. The whole time I wept and painted. So anyway, the next year, next day, like I won a prize. So it was fruitful. So these are just few small things. We participated in many inter-school competitions, painted banners, uh, then painted uh, placards. And then we had uh, these concerts in our school. So I used to paint the sets. I mean, I used to get late coming back home me and my friend and i like we were supposed to paint the sets right during the concert so my mom would really get pissed like oh it's already late you are into that but that's how like it was really fun i really miss those days and painting has always been a passion i don't get much time to follow it right now but i'm not a i'm not a very i'm not a pro i'm, I'm not a professional painter as such I used to do whatever I could with watercolors. That's how. But but can I suggest something then, beautiful dentist? Let me ask. Let me tell you, suggest something to you. You've got yeah. a beautiful story in front of you. I think you should start writing your stories. And uh, since uh, I know for sure that you are a very good writer, I'm just making this up. But then I know for sure that you will be able to write very beautifully. I'm not number a one. Writer. Number two, we. Right. <laughs> no, but you, once you try, I know you can do it. So we want to see a book coming up, a book on your interesting dentistry stories or, you know, stories like this. And then maybe, you know, we can also see your paintings. I, I really wish that I could see some of your paintings and uh, maybe you could start doing it with your little daughter and then, you know, we can see some of the exhibitions. I am putting this into your head. I'm putting ideas into your head so that apart from your dentistry, you can also do these sort of things and creative stuff. So that um, we can get to see the beautiful dentist with her paintings and her book coming up. But before we go, some rapid fire questions that I was thinking that I should ask you. Very quickly, I'll ask you, what is your favorite color? What is Shabnam's favorite color? My favorite color would be red. Oh, lovely. You look very good in red, of course, any day. Thank you. So, and what is your favorite food? Favorite food? I, I love Chinese food. I love Mughlai food as well. I love to do a bit of cooking when it's like, when there's some occasion. Every day cooking becomes real boring, but then you have no other way out. Like, especially during this pandemic when maids are not supposed to, when the helpers are not supposed to come and help you. Everything is on your head. You come back home, wash everything, do the dishes, cooking. So it becomes really difficult. And even nowadays, during this uh, COVID times, you're child also you need to tutor your child even even what hasn't been taught in this school like if earlier they used to attend school right so everything was easier much easier because they used to face the teachers and obviously teachers are much better teachers and they can teach yeah and it i mean their kids can imbibe the good things from their teachers much better i believe than their parents i mean they do that but everything becomes really hectic now. So, so when it comes to cooking, things become really hectic. But I do, if I do, I do love cooking as well. But not very good in it. Just shelter type. I mean, come chill out types. <laughs> Lovely. So, Shabnam's uh, favorite personality. My favorite personality would be Diana, Princess Diana. I would actually say Benazir Bhutto. Princess Diana. How, they, how they, yes, how they strive through everything. I mean, they made a name for themselves, right? Everything was not easy for them. Yes, Benazir Bhutto, she was, she had, she was born with a silver spoon, but then things were not very easy. So they were good, good personality. I mean, I always look forward to them. And Shabnam's favorite place to go to? 
some some place that she has traveled her favorite place i love beaches a lot i actually am born in hills but i love beaches so uh, the best place would be i enjoyed a lot in goa so goa is a nice place to be in and shabnu's favorite quotation for life some favorite quotation that you have for life the favorite quotation is tomorrow is gone you never know about the i mean sorry yesterday is gone you don't know about tomorrow so the make the best use i mean best use of your present make it the i mean if you if you have your goals set and every if your mindset if you have your goals set and you need to invest in your time and nothing is late i believe i i may want to follow my i mean i may want to pursue my i mean career because there's a lot to learn right so i may i'm i mean i've gone ahead now it's quite some time that i've cleared my dental school so what i believe is it's never too late to start anything it is always the the time you are in is the best time to invest in it unless your goals are set that's what i believe so make wonderful. the most of your present time that's what i believe you know you you are an amazing person can i tell you that and you deserve to be a queen you know seriously oh, wow. that you know, when you said in the beginning that you know i don't deserve all this but then you deserve the best and uh, i i really would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and spending so much time you spent an hour telling us about oral hygiene dentistry so many different facets of your life and uh, i'm really really grateful to you that you actually gave us so much people watching you right now i'm sure they must have taken home whatever you've said you've given them advice you've given them uh, you know advice about wearing the mask and everything you are such a wonderful person such a wonderful human being and such a wonderful woman you know i am proud that i know you shabnam and uh, i am proud that you came to my show i'm privileged and i'm honored seriously <laughs> i'm honored as well i'm honored as well tilatwa to be have to have been in your show it's a matter of privilege for me thank you so much for having me i mean it it from the deeper from the core of my heart i'm really thankful to you for as well as to free birds for having me thank you so much at least i it will be beneficial for me if i can reach to any of the audience whoever is listening to me and at least that at least some changes they can make in their oral hygiene it will be really helpful for i mean it i will be really grateful if if it is if anything which i have said would be helpful for any of our viewers thank you yes the viewers i'm sure are going to take all the advice from a beautiful dentist i'm sure they're going to i'm going to take the advice i am taking all your advice about oral hygiene about cleaning my tongue i haven't done that so i have to do all this and about the last thing that you said live in the moment do the things now and nothing is impossible i'm going to start doing some interesting things in my life thank you for the advice shabnam and thank you for your time love you thank so you. much you take care love you love you bye bye you take care thank you bye bye